Hello and welcome to our phone burner demo today. I, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and joining me today. My name is Jeff Osnes. I will be your host. I will be walking you through our demo and showing you how you can increase revenues using phone burner. All right, so let's go ahead and get into things here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the contacts tab up here at the top. That'll take me to the phone burner contact manager. In this case, I've got several sample contacts, several contacts that I added to the system that I can use to, to make calls. Um, you should have a couple sample contacts of your own that you can use to practice with. These contacts I've added so that I can go through several different call uh, call options, call uh, calls with you and kind of talk you through how to use phone burner. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these contacts that I've got in here. So I've gone ahead and selected those contacts. Once I've selected the contacts that I want to call, I'm going to click on the begin dial session button up here at the top and that's going to open up the dial session window. I'm going to make this window larger and I want to talk you through this screen here. So when you first select your contacts and you begin a dial session, there's a, there's a few setup steps that PhoneBurner has for you. The first one, PhoneBurner wants to know if you want to have a script up on the screen. Now we do have a sample script in PhoneBurner. I'm going to use the sample script on our call today because I want to talk to you about scripts and how they interact in the dial session window. Uh, you can also choose your voicemail that you want to use during the dial session. I've got several voicemails pre-created in this account. As you can see here, I get to choose which voicemail it is that I want to use when I start the dial session. So I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, let's say, my Tuesday follow-up voicemail, for example. The next one is my dialing set and live answer sets. These are the buttons that I'm going to see on the screen as I'm making calls. We're going to talk about these more in detail once we get in the dial session itself, but just so that you know, you can customize the buttons that you see on the screen, and we will be talking about these a bit more. This is where you choose which buttons you're going to have on the screen when you start making calls. So I just want you to take note of the dialing and live answer sets, but we will be talking about them in more detail once we get on the once we get in the dial session, we have those on the screen. So let's go ahead and continue. So the next screen gives us a phone number and a PIN. One of the great things about phone burners, it does not require any special equipment. It works with your existing phone and your existing computer, and the way you connect the two is with a simple phone call. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call that number and enter the PIN. It doesn't matter if you use your home phone, your cell phone, your office phone, you know, a pay phone. You can use whatever phone you want to use to call into the system. It doesn't matter to phone burner. Just call the number and enter the PIN. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that number and get us connected. All right, so I'm now connected to the system. I've dialed in, got my phone connected to the system. Now I'm using a phone. Uh, you can't hear it. Um, I've just got a different phone connected. Uh, so don't worry, you're not going to be bothered by the other noises that that phone is going to make. So we're, we're good there. But I just wanted you to know that I'm connected. I just dialed in. You can see on the screen that I am connected. Uh, but before we start dialing our 10 contacts, which you see are selected and ready to go, I want to talk to you about caller ID. The caller ID is actually configurable. So if you're not able to, if the number you want to display to your contacts is not the phone number that you're going to be calling in from, not a problem. In your phone burner settings, you can actually go in and configure your caller ID, and you can set that to whatever phone number you need it to be while you're making phone calls. So anyway, we've got our caller ID set, we've got our contacts selected, now all we need to do is hit the start dialing button and the system is going to start calling through our contacts that we selected. So here we got Ed Eddie Revrunner. Um, he's now, you know, the system is now calling Eddie. Down across the bottom of the screen you're going to see the different disposition buttons. If it goes to voicemail, don't listen to the entire greeting, don't wait for the beep. As soon as you know it's a voicemail, click that leave voicemail button and you're off to the next call. So look at that. We are already on our second phone call and we've left a voicemail. So now we're on the phone calling Molly Trainer. Um, let's say Molly doesn't answer the phone. It rings and rings and rings and it doesn't answer. I click the no answer button and I move on. Now you can also set a specific amount of time for the system to try to reach somebody before it automatically marks them as no answer. So you got some options there, but if you ever get tired of listening to it ring, click that no answer button and you are ready to go. But let's say let's say Tara 
answers the phone. We get Tara on the phone and we're talking to her. One of the great things about phone burner is there's no delays. As soon as they answer the phone, you hear them answer the phone. You don't have to wait wait for any any connection time. There's none of that awkward silence like you may have seen with other other dialers out there. Phone burner, you are always live on the line, ready to talk to that person. Now, let's say we're on the phone with Tara. Uh, we're talking to Tara. I do want to point out our phone script. If you're making phone calls using phone burner and you want to follow a script, not a problem. We do offer a phone script option. And so here you can see I selected the phone script. This is the script that I selected at the beginning of the dial session. And you'll notice with phone burner, the scripts can be built in, what, in, in like a dynamic way. So you can see that this script has inserted Tara's name into the script. So it says, hi Tara, this is Mr. Demo. And it's inserted my name, Mr. Demo, into the script. These scripts can be set up dynamically to pull data from the contact details as well as any custom fields can go right here into the script. So feel free to build these scripts out any way you want. Also, I'd like to point out that they do accept full HTML. So if you have other things that you'd like to insert in there, maybe some sort, sort of formatting, um, any widgets or anything like that, it accepts HTML source code so you can insert that kind of information, that kind of stuff into the script. So here we are, we're talking to Tara, having a good conversation. When we're done talking to Sarah, or maybe we're still on the phone talking to Sarah, that's actually, before we hang up with Tara, let's say we're talking to Tara, she's really interested in what we're doing. And I need to follow up with her, I need to actually talk to her again. So I'm talking to Tara, she's really interested, we have a good call, and she says, you know what, give me a call tomorrow at two o'clock. Phone burner has a calendar built in, so I click on the actions button in the upper right hand corner, Click on Actions and I go to Schedule Follow-up. That brings up my phone burner calendar. I'm going to make it larger. At this point I can choose a date and time for my follow-up appointment. Now this is an appointment so I'm choosing a specific date and a specific time. So I choose the, the date and time, click Add Event. Like any calendar I go through here, I enter the details, um, need to follow up and get specific information to close the deal. Whatever kind of description I want to put in, put in for that appointment, you know, start date, end date, time, we need to make sure that that's all right. We can also set the priority of this appointment. This is a critical one because we're trying to close business on this one. We can set the system to send us a reminder, you know, 15 minutes before. Another cool thing is we can have the system send an appointment email to Tara. The system will actually send Tara an email about the appointment, including the description and the event, the event name, plus the date and time of the event in her time zone, as long as we've got her time zone in phone burner. We should, because we have her phone number, so we should know where she's located, right? So, so anyway, once we've entered these details, we save and close. Actually, I don't want to save and close on this one. I'm actually just going to save this one. Once we save it, you'll actually see it show up on the calendar. You'll see it shows up as red because it's critical as opposed to green, which is not critical. And um, before we move on from the calendar, I do want to point out that the phone burner calendar can sync with Google. So if we click on this little gear right here and we go down to the bottom, you'll see in your phone burner calendar settings the option to link your Google Calendar and your phone burner calendar together. That way when you input one information on one it shows up on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and close the calendar now. That brings us back to the dial session window. And now that we've ended our call with Tara, you can see we're no longer connected to Tara. I'm going to go ahead and update my notes. Super nice lady. She is ready to go. We just need to get the details on Tuesday. So I enter my notes, update any custom fields that I need to update, and then I click on the disposition button down here across the bottom. When I click on a disposition button, the disposition buttons can do all kinds of cool things. One, they can send a follow-up email based off of the button I click on. They can also move contacts into different, uh, into different folders. They also update the status of the contact. All of this information is, is being updated automatically with one button click. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and mark her as interested. 
and that will move us on to the next call, moves her into my interested folder, and we're off to Henry Masterson. So Henry Masterson, the master closer. Let's say it goes to voicemail, so I click the leave voicemail button. No need to listen to the greeting, no need to wait for the beep. As soon as I know it's a voicemail, click it, and I'm off to the next call. Now let's say we're calling John Franks. Let's say John answers the phone, I go to vo phone script. You'll see it now says John in the script. It's updated with John's information. That's the cool thing about a dynamic script, right? So let's say we're talking to John, having a good conversation. Not quite as good a conversation as the other person. Um, John just wants us to follow up. Maybe John's like one of those contacts where you call him and he says, hey, you know what? I'm super busy right now. Give me a call back in, uh, uh, give me a call back in a couple weeks, right? So we click on uh, our, our custom fields here and I've got a follow up date. You can create follow-up dates. You can create custom fields of your own. Any custom field that you want to have in your system, you can create. And so let's say he says, give me a call back in a couple weeks. So I schedule that out for a couple weeks from now. And, uh, and that's it. Click away. That appointment, the, it's not really an appointment because it's not going in my calendar. I want to keep my calendar nice and clean. Only fixed appointments. Appointments that have a specific date and specific time. Whereas John Frank said, hey, just give me a call back in a couple weeks. I should have more time then. That's just somebody I want to follow up with in a couple weeks, right? So I'm done talking to John. I don't want to hang up my phone. Do not hang up your phone. If you hang up your phone, you will be disconnected from phone burner. Use the buttons on the screen. So in this case, I'm going to click live answer and I'm going to end the call. That's going to disconnect me from Mr. John Franks, right? I'm no longer connected. I can go in here and update my notes. Um, nice guy wants me to follow up with him in a couple weeks. Of course, fix my spelling mistakes if I want to do that before I move on. And then I click the follow up button. When I click the follow up button, that moves him into my follow up folder, sends him a follow up email, and we're off to the next call, right? So here we're calling Jenny Thompson. Let's say Jenny Thompson is another voicemail. So I click the leave voicemail button. Once again, I don't listen to the entire greeting. I don't wait for the beep. As soon as I know it's a voicemail, click the button and move on to the next call. And here we're on to Eric. Eric, let's say Eric's phone is busy. So I click the busy signal button. And now I'm off to the next call. So here you can see I'm just clicking on the dispositions, the buttons that make sense based off the outcome of the call. So let's say we get uh, Sam Johnson here. Sam Johnson is another voicemail. So we click leave voicemail. And then Brock. Let's say Brock is a no answer. So I click no answer. Here you can see we're really moving through our calls at this point. Once you get your rhythm down and you understand how things are going, you're just clicking on disposition. Dispositions. So let's say Sarah, I call Sarah, she answers, we have a good conversation with her. Uh, actually, not a good conversation. She says, hey, stop calling me or don't ever call me again, things like that. Um, there is a button here, do not call. I click the do not call button. What that's going to do is that's actually going to move her into my bad slash DNC folder that I created. And it's going to add her phone number to my do not call list so I don't ever call her again. So I click the do not call button. And that's my 10th call. So that ends the session. I'm no longer connected. I'm closed. And look at this. Look at all this stuff that I did. In just 11 minutes, I had 10 calls. 10 calls. I had three conversations, sent eight emails, and left four voicemails. Look how much faster you can get your work done using Phone Burner. It's all about increasing revenue. It's all about increasing call volume. It's all about automating your processes of working with your contacts. Let me show you, now that we did a dial session, let me go ahead and close this window. I want to show you what happened here. So we started, all these contacts were in the contacts folder, right? We had 10 contacts in the contacts folder. If I click on the contacts folder, you'll see I now only have seven contacts in there. If I go to my interested folder, here's Tara. She's in my interested folder. If I go to my follow-up folder, there's John. John's in my follow-up folder. If I go to the not interested folder, I don't have any contacts in there because I didn't click on not interested for anybody. 
I go to my bad slash DNC folder, you'll see Sarah. That's the last person I clicked on, marked her as do not call. She's in my bad slash DNC folder. So the system can be separating your data, can be cleaning up your data as you're going through it and moving those contacts into different folders. So all of this can be done. You can go in here and you can customize this stuff. We have training that will walk you through this. The support team is available to help you with any questions. But Phoneburner is all about automation, automating as much of your workflow as possible, but not locking you into any specific method. You get to control this flow. You get to create your follow-up folders. You get to create the cu and customize your buttons to do what you need them to do, to send the emails that you want them to send. Um, everything is customizable in Foam Burner so that you can really, really get things honed in, dialed in to how you want them to work, right? So I'm just going to point out a few different things on where you can go to start customizing some of these things, right? So here's our folders that I've got created. You can customize your own folders right here in the Create and Manage Folders section. You can create new folders. You can also reorder the folders. You can make them subfolders. It's just a drag and drop. You can create and customize your emails by going to the emails and phone script section. Here you can create scripts, you can create emails. These emails can be customized in a way to where they're personalized, where it actually inserts the contacts information into the script, into the not the script, the email. Just but the script as well. Remember we talked about it that in the dial session. Um, the buttons can be customized. If we go to the phone burners, sorry, if we go to the dial sessions tab here and go to phone burner settings, you can go to your dispositions and you can customize your dispositions, your dialing set, your live answer set. In these dispositions, when you're customizing them, let's go into our live answer set for example. When we're customizing these, we can choose to have these these buttons do different things, such as uh, move the contact into a specific folder or send a specific email. Certain buttons can actually add contacts to the do not call list. So lots of different features, lots of different functionality within those button sets, those that the customization of those buttons. Um, some other things that you can do as far as automation before we wrap up. If I go back to contacts, you may have noticed, you may not have noticed, but uh, over on the left hand side underneath the folders is a save search today's follow ups. Uh, remember how we had that call with one of the contacts, I forget who it was, if I go to our follow-up folder, uh, John Franks, right? So we called John Franks, had a good conversation with John, um, or maybe not a great conversation, John just said, hey, give, us, give me a call back at some date in the future. So we set that follow-up date, right? Remember November 20th? That's the date we set that for. On November 20th, I've set up this save search to display any of my contacts that are in the follow-up folder that have a follow-up date of November 20th. If I go to today's follow-ups, you'll see that there are no follow-ups for today because, well, it's not November 20th. If I go back into John Franks, I can customize his follow-up date Now when I go to today's follow-ups, look who shows up. We've got John Franks here. You can actually create these dynamic save searches. Above the list of contacts, you'll see the advanced search option. And there are lots of different things that you can use to create a save search like this. You can set it to search for particular contacts in particular folders based off of any custom fields, phone burner data, whether you know based off the last time they were called or the total number of times they were called. Tagging, we didn't even talk about tagging today. Didn't have time. But anyway, uh, lots of cool things that you can do with Phone Burner. Um, if you need some help with it, uh, obviously we've got lots of training out there, but we're, our support team will be there to help you. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. I do want to show you our support. If I click on the support tab here, you'll see we do offer phone support from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Time, Monday through Friday. So feel free to reach out to our support team. They're happy to help. You can also open up a ticket, send an email. If it's not something urgent, you just want to ask something, you know, send a ticket in. That's great. Anyway, that concludes our webinar. I appreciate you taking time to join me today, and I hope you'll take advantage of Phone Burner to really increase your revenues. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.